Welcome to the Master the French DVD series. If you saw part one, you're already familiar with how to play against the exchange variation, the advanced variation, and some other side variations that White can choose against the French. In this volume, you shall learn about the Tarash variation, which starts with E4, E6, D4, D5, and Knight D2. This is one of the better moves for white against the French, next to knight c3, which you shall see in part 3. Knight d2 became especially popular in the 1980s when former world champion Anatoly Karpov played it time after time in his matches against Viktor Korchnoi. They played dozens of games in the French defense in their three matches. Black had difficulties in that particular variation in fully equalizing, but nevertheless, Korchner was defending the honor of the French defense. I'd like to share with you my experiences on experimenting with the various options against Knight D2. There are at least four different options here. One is Knight C6, which we'll start with. Another one is C5, and then there will be two options after white trades, taking back with the pawn or the queen. Then there is knight f6. And we'll also discuss on, in part 3, when we are talking about the knight c3 variations, when pawn takes on e4 and knight takes back, which is exactly the same as if black in this position would do that and then the white knight takes back. So let's get started after knight d2, knight c6. Now black attacks the pawn on d4 immediately. White has two ways to try to protect the pawn, either by playing c3, which we'll look at first, or the better move, knight to f3. c3 can follow the following way. Again, a little bit surprising move, e5, just like when we saw on part 1 in the 2, d3, in the rare variations. Black had a similar idea, wasting a move, moving that e pawn a second time. In this case, it's because white has played c3 and black hopes that maybe the d3 square will be weak. Now, if white takes on e5, Black will just take back, of course. If white plays knight to f3, then black proceeds trading on d4, followed by trading on e4, and when knight takes back, bishop b4 chuck, knight c3, knight e7, with a quite comfortable position with white's isolated pawn on d4. Let's go back to the position after black plays e5 on move 4. And the best move for white is to trade on d5. Queen takes back on d5. And white plays knight g to f3. Here, black's best move is to take pawn takes d4. However, before we proceed with that, I'd like to share with you some very interesting ideas. If black plays bishop g4, which is a mistake, white would continue with bishop c4. And after bishop f3, not taking the queen, then black would be fine after bishop takes d1. However, quite impressively, Grandmaster Karras' idea, queen b3, a very unusual move, not recapturing the bishop on f3, not capturing the queen on d5, but queen b3, quite a brilliant move, bringing the queen away from the attack of the bishop while maintaining the attack on black's queen, as well as black bishop, of course, and in addition, creating a new threat to the b7 pawn. 
black would move the queen back to d7, and now white would capture on f3, attacking black's pawn on e5, while the b7 pawn is still hanging. White has a clear lead in development. Pawn took on d4. White castles. And then now black tries to play knight a5 to attack the queen and trying to win white's bishop on c4. A very important little combination that white prepared. Bishop takes f7. And after queen takes f7, queen b5 check, forking the king and the knight. And now if c6, of course, white just simply takes the knight on a5, and black's lack of development is completely devastating. And knight c6 doesn't help either, saving the knight, because after queen takes pawn, white would fork the black rook and knight, giving white a winning advantage. Let's go back to this position, where we just saw what happened after bishop g4 and then bishop c4, Bishop took on f3, and the amazing move, queen b3, quite shocking. It's much better for black to instead take on d4. When white also proceeds with bishop to c4, attacking the queen. And now black can choose where to go with the queen, to h5 or to f5. Let's see how things develop after queen f5. After pawn takes, bishop e6, black is okay. White is better off taking with the knight. Black would now trade, and the pawn would take back. And black plays bishop e6. Now, white must hurry up if they want to play for an advantage before black completes development, because if black succeeds, Developing all the pieces, putting the king into safety, the weakness of the d4 pawn will be a problem. So white has to play queen a4 check. That's the correct move. Now black can block in two reasonable ways, either with a pawn or with a bishop. Let's see what happens after c6. White castles. Black plays knight f6. Rook e1, bishop d6, and now bishop takes e6, pawn takes, and white has a strong move, queen b3, forking both the b7 and e6 pawns. This was played in a quick game between the Argentinian grandmaster Zarniki and Garry Kasparov. White took the pawn. Black took, the rook took, black played rook e8, rook takes, rook takes, black threatens to checkmate, knight f3, rook e2, but after bishop d2, white has some advantage. Let's go back to the position where white gave the check on move 10 with queen a4. The other option is to play bishop to d7, then white plays queen b3, black castles, and so does white. Now, the pawn on f7 is a little bit of a problem. Black cannot play f6 because that would leave the knight hanging on g8. After knight h6 protecting the pawn, white has an advantage after knight e4, another elegant move that cannot be captured well because of bishop d5 coming. White also proved to have an advantage in several games 
after bishop e6, rook e1, bishop takes c4, and knight takes c4. Black's king is in a less secured position than white's because of the open c file, and that gives white the initiative in this position. According to today's theory, black's best option here is bishop d6. Although I have to say I have a little difficulty convincing myself that I would give this pawn up. Surprisingly, none of the white players took the courage to take this pawn so far, so it's up to the test of the future. But with my experiments with the, my silicon friends, like Fritz Jr. and some other programs, I couldn't find a clear compensation really for a pawn, although I tried.